Hi guys, I um, hope that you're all well. Just wanted to do a slightly different video to the ones that I normally do. Um, I'm obviously trying to mix up a, a little bit of the, the content that I'm doing now. So it's been predominantly uh, matches, uh, competitive matches like uh, Senior British League, um, Cheshire and Lancashire Vets, local league matches. Um, I've also been putting some practice matches on. Um, I put a video on the other day, which was a look at a uh, like a 60 minute practice session that I had with Kamal Hussein. Um, I had some really good feedback on that so far, actually. Uh, I, I wanted to do something like that just to give everybody like a little bit of an insight into the stuff that I'm working on. Um, some of the drills that we do, because uh, of the very, very good practice sessions that we have with Kamal, he's an excellent coach. Um, yeah, a little bit of an insight into the drills that we do, why we do them, um, how well that I, I feel like I'm um, completing them, the areas that I'm, I'm looking to improve on. Um, this video is going to be split into um, a couple of different sections. Uh, the first bit that we're going to look at is the bat that I use um, and the setup that I've got. It's a, it's a question that I get asked quite frequently, um, so I thought I'd have a, a little bit of a discussion about that. Um, and then the second part is going to be um, just a few kind of like little hints and tips that I've picked up over the last five or six years. Um, I've had some very, very good coaching, been to some excellent training camps, played with a lot of good people. Um, and I'm always keen to pick the brains of, uh, you know, to, of, of strong players as to what they're working on, what they do to improve. Um, so I've got some, um, you know, I've got some good bits of advice really. Um, Obviously, this is very much from a, uh, you know, from a, a player's perspective. I mean, I would class myself as probably still a relatively um, intermediate level. Um, I'm, I mean, I said I'd say that I'm playing at a, a pretty good local league standard. Uh, still, say I'm, you know, kind of like an intermediate player overall. So, this is by no means from a coach's perspective or from a from a high level. All I can say is that it's um, things that as a as an improving intermediate player. Uh, things that have helped me and will hopefully help you guys. So first of all, let's have um, a little bit of a chat about the setup that I use. Um, so basically what I've got is um, the blade is the Harimoto ALC um, with the, I think it's an anatomical handle. Uh, I usually use a flared one, but I've actually gone to anatomic this time um, just for something a little bit different. I don't know difference to be honest with you when it's actually it, it feels quite nice when I'm playing with it so Harimoto ALC blade 10 g 05 on the forearm which is the black side um, and then uh, it's a Raxa 7 soft on the, um, the backhand side um, I, I got this blade in uh, December um, and I got it um, because Kamal it's, it's one of the blades that Kamal uses, um, he really likes it. There's a couple of other guys that use it um, at the, uh, the practices that I go to, so I've had a quick go and I do like it. Um, I mean, the, the one thing that I do generally find, and I'm sure that um, some of you guys will find this as well, is that whenever I go to a practice session and I have a go with somebody else's bat, I just immediately think, wow, that's fantastic, and it's much better than what I've got. Um, so you have to be a little bit careful. So one of the things that I uh, that I don't like to do is mess around with the setup too much. Um, the reason for that is that when oh, well when I have done that in the past is um, I, I just I hate that feeling of when you're playing and especially if you're playing in a uh, a league match or you know something that's a little bit more important than just a normal practice. I hate that feeling of hitting a shot. Um, it going in the net or going off the end of the table and you don't know well is that me is it the rubber is it the blade um, you kind of you end up in a, a little bit in no man's land uh, I've seen it with players so many times where they're tinkering around with stuff and they're constantly like chopping and changing bats um, and they're almost looking for a like a you know like a, a magic solution that they're going to suddenly pick something up with a certain type of rubber on it and they're going to play like Marlong um, it's just not going to happen. So, um, yeah, I don't like to mess around with it too much. But by the same token, I'm not averse to to trying 
um, you know, like trying, you know, trying different rubbers and whatnot. Um, but I do tend to find that when once I found something that I like, I'll stick with it, and I'll try and stick with it for a long period of time. Uh, the the blade itself is uh, is great. It's I think it's five layers of uh, natural wood and then two layers of carbon. Um, and then I think there is um, there's, the the carbon is not isn't right at the very edge of the blade. So it means that um, obviously the carbon is there to give it a little bit of speed, but um, there's a bit of control there as well. So I think that works quite nicely. Um, like I said, it's definitely faster than the blade that I had before, which was the Steger Clipper. Um, I was using that again for probably about the uh, best part of two years. Um, lovely blade. Um, but again, I just wanted to try this just something because I feel like my game has progressed enough that I can go for something a little bit quicker. So in terms of the... Um, the, so the forearm rubber, so Tenergy 05, um, uh, for me personally, I think it's uh, absolutely fantastic rubber. Um, I think there's a reason why that it's been the, uh, the leading rubber over the last 10 years or so. Um, I know that a lot of the top players are kind of like going on to like the, um, the 09C and you know, various different uh, rubbers, but I think for me personally, I think that's, I think it's excellent. I think it's a rubber that if you're a, uh, if, you know, if you're a, a good looper, um, you can't really get anything better. It's got an excellent combination of uh, spin, speed, uh, nice high throw angle, which I like. Um, you can pretty much do anything that you want with it. So I think it's absolutely fantastic. It's not a rubber for um, a beginner to low intermediate, I would say. Uh, something that's just a little bit slower. Um, I mean, again, I would definitely recommend that. You don't want to, I think, I think a lot of people, when they first start off, they just think like they want something really, really fast. And that means that they can hit the ball really fast, really hard, and they can win loads of points. But there's so much more to it. So um, you have to really think quite hard about getting a, a rubber that will allow you to um, to be obviously be able to hit the ball fast um, and spin the ball well. But you have to remember that if, if it allows you to put a lot of spin onto your shots, then it's also very sensitive to the incoming spin as well. Um, I'll go on to that in a minute because that's one of the reasons why I've actually changed the backhand rubber. Um, but yeah, so you have to think about, um, especially as your game progresses, that it's not only about hitting the ball hard um, and fast, but it's also about being able to control service returns being able to control uh, touch shots, keeping it nice and short, keeping it nice and low. If you have a rubber that is really, uh, really fast, really springy, then it can be very, very difficult to do that. So it's always worth bearing that in mind. Um, but like I say, I think for me, um, you see, I mean, again, I tend to do more like the touch play really on the, the backhand side. Um, so yeah, so the Tenor Joe 5, I think is absolutely fantastic for the forearm. For the backhand, um, when I first got this blade in uh, December, I put 10 g 5 FX on the backhand. Uh, the FX is slightly softer than the um, than the 05, so um, it's just it's generally recommended as a um, as a backhand rubber. Uh, I did like it, but the only problem is that I tend to so the way that I play is that I obviously kind of loop. Uh, very much on my forehand, my backhand, I'll obviously kind of, you know, I, I do back and open up and I'll dry with it, but I tend to do a lot more control play with the backhand side, so I'll, I generally receive serves with the backhand, um, I tend to push more with the backhand, uh, and I'll block more with the backhand side as well, so I, I feel like I need a little bit more control. Um, again, if you watch a lot of instructional videos out there, um, speak to a lot of people that, um, and I, I know like a lot of the top Chinese players, they would have Hurricane 3 on the forehand, uh, and then have the you know the 05 or 05 FX on the backhand side, something that's a bit quicker so that it would allow you to pick balls up and because of the fact that the backhand stroke is not as long and there isn't as much body used on the backhand as the forehand, therefore a faster rubber works better. For me personally, I think that um, you know something that's got a little bit more control um, it's a little bit more forgiving uh, works a little bit better what I would find with the 05 FX on this particular blade because uh, obviously like I said this blade is a little bit quicker than the, the blade that I used to have um, is that it's quite difficult to control heavy top spin so if, if the ball is coming at you quite fast with a lot of spin um, I was just finding it was just just pinging off the table um, so it was kind of one of those I was I was on and on about what to do, um, 
I've looked at a few different rubbers. What I've actually kind of done just for the time being is I've actually put the uh, the, the, the Raxa 7 Soft, which is what I had on my previous blade. Um, I, 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 there's, a, there's a few others. There's the R37, uh, Rosanta R37 that I've thought about. Um, and a few others that are just a little bit slower, but this uh, Raxa 7 Soft is a really, really nice rubber. Um, again, it's one that I've used for two, two and a half years. So um, it's nice actually, it's just got a little bit more control. It's not massively different to Tenergy. Um, I'd say it's just, just a fraction slower, a little bit more. Um, you know, the, it's nice, like I said, the, the sponge is nice and soft. There's a lot of dwell time. You can kind of feel the, feel the ball sort of like sinking in and you can do an awful lot with it. So, um, so yeah, so that works great. Uh, again, it's not quite as, um, quite, not quite as fast as the, as the 05. So it means that in terms of being able to sort of, you know, touch short, uh, control the incoming spin, um, I think it works great. So yeah, so that's essentially it. So that is my bat setup, Harimoto, um, ALC, um, which I think is like a, uh, it's, it's called the Harimoto because obviously they've, they've put Harimoto's name to it to sell it, but it's, I think it's essentially like the Inner Force ALC. Um, Tenergy 05 on the forehand, uh, Raxa 7 Soft on the backhand. So these are um, some of the, like I say, some of the bits of advice that I would give um, for those of you who are just starting out on your table tennis journey, or for those of you who um, are kind of well underway but you're looking to um, to get to get better. Um, I would say so. Point number one: um, find a good coach. Uh, I think that's probably. The, the single best piece of advice that I could kind of give to anybody. Um, I mean, I've learned this myself through uh, different sports that I've been involved in over the years. Uh, main ones, I mean, I've, I've been a, I, I like to think I still am a pretty, pretty good golfer, play golf to a decent standard, uh, played to county level, very nearly got down to scratch uh, about 10 years ago. So, um, you know, I, I understand the, um, you know, a lot of the theories involved in, uh, in, in coaching and how to get the best out of a, a golfer. Uh, I've also played uh, a bit of tennis when I was younger, before I played table tennis, uh, and I've had various different bits of coaching with that. So, um, I've, you know, so I've kind of seen it and what works, what doesn't particularly work. Um, and uh, I think, you know, getting a good coach is really, really important. Um, not necessarily vital that you just have a single coach and you just go to see them and that's it. Um, I think there is there's a lot of value in um, gleaning uh, information from from a variety of sources um, to make yourself a much more much much rounded player. Um, but I think you do need a level of consistency in what you're doing. So, for example, if you're going to see one guy. And they're telling you that you need to you need to be working on a certain technique, and then you go to see somebody else, and they're telling you to do something completely different. Then you could end up um, in a little bit of a mess. So finding a uh, a good coach is um, is really really important. Um, I think for me personally, see, I've had a, a few different coaches over the years. Um, when I first started playing, I had Brian Keane, who was. Um, he was a, an excellent, he's a lovely low Brian, a um, little bit more old school in the way that he coaches, uh, advocate of short pips on the backhand, uh, which isn't for everybody, um, but he really gave me um, really good grounding in, um, especially like pushing and the, the more basic shots, pushes and drives. So kind of built a really solid foundation to kind of then grow um, and play the more advanced shots. Um, I then had coaching with George Lennon, um, who is again, you know, an, an excellent coach. Um, I'd say that George was the one who really started to develop my attacking game to get me to think about third ball, fifth ball attacks, um, um, loop backspin. Um, I mean, I would say that that's probably the one of the um, biggest improvements to my game and where I actually saw that I'd, I'd literally jumped up a level, if not two levels, as soon as I could consistently loop backspin rather than trying to just push the ball all the time. Um, and looking to uh, attack more and more. So um, George was very, very good for that. He was the one who really developed my, um, like I say, my, my forehand came on massively that first season. Uh, the, the 2017 to 18, when I played in Warrington, I would, um, yeah, I would push, um, be quite passive really. And then 
uh, because of the work with George, I then started to, um, to improve massively. And then uh, more recently with Kamal Hussein, he's brought my game on hugely. I've been with Kamal since um, 2020. And um, like I say, seen, seen huge, huge improvements. Um, I've also been on various different training camps. Um, Ed Lynn in Birmingham, um, he, the, the camps that he, he does are absolutely fantastic. So, um, so yeah, so anyway, so I think that, you know, coaching is definitely the way forward. Um, it's not not necessarily for everybody, but I, I think that even if you don't play like a textbook style, I think that there's, you know, you can certainly improve shots. If you're like a pusher and a blocker, for example, you can still go to see somebody and you can say to them, you know, I don't necessarily, you know, want to loop, uh, want to play an attacking game. I'm more of a defensive player. I want to just get better at pushing. Uh, and, and hitting for example so they, they'll be able to work on that with you so um, so that's one of the things that I would definitely say is to um, yeah, find yourself uh, find yourself a good coach um, and try and see them as regularly as you can okay the uh, second point um, is that uh, th now this is something that uh, I'm probably guilty of myself um, from time to time but you want to try and um, actively put what you've been learning in your practice sessions into your match play. Um, now, what I would say is that I think I think what a lot of people tend to do is they'll have a lesson or they'll have a series of lessons and they sort of think that just by having the lessons, they will get better. Um, that can be true to an extent, but you're, like, you're only really gonna improve and kind of push on to the next level if you're actively trying to put what you've done in the practice sessions into matches so there's no point in just going and you know like i say having 10 weeks worth of lessons but then as soon as you then say right come on let's, let's play a few games you just go back to doing what you'd normally do i think that's one of the most difficult things with table tennis is that because it's such an instinctive game where you don't have any time to think that actually putting that into um, putting what you've learned something new into a match situation is really really difficult because you're trying to you know because you, you need to actively think about it and if you're actively thinking about something you don't have the time to be able to actually do it so or certainly not do it well um, so it's a it's a really really difficult thing that to, to be able to kind of make that transition across I think that it takes hours and hours and hours of practice if you're wanting to change something even if it's something dead simple like with a backhand like if you're trying to just have your elbow a little bit higher and then whip your arm through i mean that sounds dead simple but then you try and actually do that and then do it in a competitive match it's almost next to impossible so i think that you you just really need to try and um obviously i wouldn't necessarily say try and you know go for a coaching session and then the next league match that you play try and do it but i think that you've just got to actively be trying to do this in your practice matches and i think they are really really important um i mean i think for me that what i would say that the three kind of like key ingredients to to longer term improvement is um coaching practice matches real matches um i'll kind of come on come on to that um in, in a little bit but um, I think that's really, really important. Um, yeah, you have to try and transfer the theory into an actual match, and practice matches are the best way to do that. So just for example, for me, there's, a, there's obviously a few things that I'm working on at the moment. One of them is a forearm flick. Um, it's a shot that I haven't really used very much. Um, I haven't really trained yet, I'm not really confident, so a lot of the time if somebody serves short to my forearm, then I'll just step in and push it. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing that, uh, providing that the push is good quality. You can obviously touch, you can dig it, you can kind of move it around. But um, I'm really getting to a stage now where I just feel that it's like a it's a weak spot that people are starting to exploit when they serve to me. So I'm looking to really like flick the ball and be a lot more aggressive. Um, again, it's difficult that because I've you know I've done that in training a few times, and then as soon as I get into a match, I'm not that confident. And I just come in and I push it again. So um, what I'm actually trying to do now, whenever I play a practice match, I'll say to myself, if somebody serves short to the forehand side, I'm going to flick it, no matter what. I don't mind if I miss it. I don't mind if I make a mistake. 
um, I can live with that as long as I know that I'm trying to do it. Um, yeah, so whenever you've, when you, you've had a lesson and if you're trying to change something, when you play a practice match, try and bring that in. Um, and then that will then work its way into um, your matches down the line. So that kind of brings me on to my, uh, my next point, which is um, that you've got to kind of accept that it can take quite a bit of time for what you're doing in practice to work your way into your matches. So um, this is one of the things that we've, you know, I've, I've discussed this on various different training camps and uh, spoken to a lot of people about this, is that, um, yeah, it's, it, again, because table tennis is something that you have to think about, or yeah, t table tennis is, some, is a sport you don't have a lot of time to think, um, and it's really, really difficult to, to make any like mean if any changes that are going to have like a, a an immediate effect um, i mean sometimes there are and it depends what level you're at so like i think that's one of the nice things when you're a, you're a beginner and you're just getting going a few little kind of tweaks to your technique can have like huge um impact like i was saying about uh when i got better at, at looping backspin um my, my you know my ability to beat players just went up really really quickly just purely on the fact that i could i could do that more effectively than i could do um, a few, you know, even a few weeks before. Um, but what I would say is that, um, yeah, you have to have to bear in mind that it can take a little bit of time to get that in, you know, to, to get it and transfer it across. That will come from doing the purposeful practice, like we were saying, actually trying to kind of get your, trying to get the theory into the actual match play. Um, but I mean, what the, what I'm always trying to think of is that the, the stuff that I'm doing in practice now will work its way into my proper match play in a few months time um, and that's the way that I'm always thinking I'm, I never ever go and have a lesson and then think right well the next time that I play in a proper match I'm going to be able to do that because you always revert to habit in a proper match uh, when you're under pressure you're a little bit nervous you'll always revert to habit so what um, so yeah so the way that I try to kind of think of it is that everything that I'm doing now will take a few months to actually get into my proper matches and i always think that whenever i when i'm driving to a practice session um and there's been plenty of times where i think to myself, oh, i just can't be bothered going tonight for whatever reason i've either i've had a, I've had a long day uh, i've had a long run in the morning i'm a bit tired and i don't really want to go but i'm, I'm always kind of thinking to myself that it will whatever i'm doing now um will you know i'm, I'm not going to see the benefits of it immediately but well, I will see the benefits of it in a few months' time, and it's like it's a constant thing. That I'm putting in the effort now, and down the line, I will get better. Um, so I think that's and that's a realistic expectation. Um, so you know, don't be too disheartened if you're, you know, you've had a really good practice session and you've worked in a new technique, like a, a new serve, or like I say, like backhand flick or something, and you think, oh, that's really good, and then you get into a match and it's like, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to try it in case I miss it. Um, uh, again, going back to the point I made before, keep keep working on that in practice. Keep doing it when you can. Obviously, when you're in a match, if it's an important match and you want to win it, and you're playing a shot and you're making mistakes with it, then yeah, then I would probably say maybe now is the time to kind of leave that alone. But keep working on it. Keep keep practicing it, and it will work its way into your game longer term. Another um, point which is obviously one of the reasons why I'm talking to you guys now is um, the importance of filming your matches. Um, I started, uh, I think it was probably about May, June, 2022. So um, I suppose, you know, about a year and a half ago now. Um, I'd, I filmed the odd match here and there, but then um, I'd had, you know, a few of, uh, me like Kamal and a few of, my, a few of the guys that I train with had said to me, film some of your matches um, and it just very quickly became a bit of a thing that I thought well I'm going to I'm, I'm going to you know provided everyone's happy with it and people are um, okay with me filming them I'm going to going to record as many of my matches as I possibly can um, I think that has um, I mean it's, it's one of the best decisions that I've made really I think it's obviously fantastic and I, I started uploading to YouTube for my own reference more than anything so it wasn't taking up uh, memory on my phone but then I've found um, I mean it's been really nice that I've started to get you know a few people kind of like following the matches and it's great to see the comments that um, people kind of like 
you know, following my progress. Um, that's really, really nice. I've had people come up to me in various different tournaments saying, you know, they, they watch my matches. Um, uh, and, and I think that's great. You know, it's absolutely fantastic. So I'm glad that, I mean, again, that the main reason is still for my own reference, but I think it's really nice that um, other people can see it as well. Uh, I've been getting some great, you know, some, some really, really good uh, comments, some great feedback, um, not always really positive, but I mean, you know, I, I like all feedback to be honest with you. And I'll always read the comments, I'll always reply where I can, and um, I'll, you know, I'll always take on board advice. Um, so, I think it's yeah, it's it's been great that I've done that. There's I think there's there's a few kind of key things that I would say that why it would be good for um, for anybody to record the matches. Uh, I think first and foremost, what you think you're doing is nowhere near what you're actually doing. Uh, I mean, I remember being horrified the first few times I watched myself because I felt like I was moving like Ma Long, uh, and I thought that my forehand was as good as his, if not better. But um, no, it was. I was, I was really surprised, I was like, how slow, how flat-footed I was, how tall I, I sort of stood. Um, didn't really look very athletic, it was just, yeah, it was, um, it was, it was awful. And I think that's one of the, the big things why people don't necessarily want to film themselves. Um, because I think they're a bit worried about what they're going to see. Um, I mean, I got over that very, very quickly, so like, it's great now because like, I don't have any, uh, well, I don't, I'm not self-conscious at all watching myself play. Um, so it's um, yeah, I think it's I think it's really good to do that because you can you can analyze your you can, your technique. You can obviously see um, stuff that you're doing well, stuff that you're not doing well. Um, you know, if you can you can obviously watch yourself and then watch some of the the top players in the world and sort of say like, well, what are they doing better? I mean, I know it's, you can say everything better, but I think there's always little things that you can kind of you can pick up on and you can um, you can kind of like change. Um, and again, you wouldn't know that you're doing that unless you actually watch yourself back. So I think that that's, um, that, that's a really big thing. Um, I think it's good to, to have the matches recorded because then you can actually, you know, other people can watch it. Like I was saying, I've had some really good tips. You could send it to, you might have, there might be a coach somewhere else in the country that you want to have a look at it. So you can say, right, okay, well, here's the, here's the footage. They can give you some advice and some feedback. Um, both practice matches and proper matches, but I think your proper matches are the ones that you want to record um, because that, like I say, you're under a bit of pressure. That is that you know when it comes to it, that is where um, you know your you know that's when you're at your rawest. Um, that's where if you're going to be making any mistakes or anything, that's where it's going to show. So, um, so yes, I would you know I, th I think that's an, a, you know another great reason. Um, I mean, I think for me personally, um, one of the things that I found really useful as well is that it's a good, um, I, like I kind of use it as a bit of a, uh, like a, like an information resource as well, because what you tend to find is that if you play against somebody, um, if you play someone in a match and you get beat by them because they've been using a particular server or a particular strategy that you just couldn't get to grips with, you'll, um, in, the, in your mind, you'll be like, oh, actually, you know, I, I he was doing that serve and I, I should have I should have tried to push it back I was trying to flick it all the time um, or you know like every time he touched it short I was trying to do this or every time he played it to my forehand I was going across that whatever it may be um, and you think oh you know next time I play him I'll make sure that I don't do that now it's obviously fresh in your mind for the next few days but then you might not see that person for six months and then you then play them again and it's like oh what was that serve that he used what was that technique what was that strategy so um I, I think that's again one of the things that that's great i mean I, I, there are certain circumstances where you might not necessarily have known that you're going to be playing that player again um but there are a lot of times where you will know you know if you're playing against the same team and that that particular person plays for that team uh, regularly um <clears throat> then you can actually you can watch it back and i do that quite a lot you know i'll you know the night before um i won't necessarily sit and like pour over every single point but I'll, you know, I'll watch it back and I'll just see, well, what did I do well? What, what didn't I do well? What were they doing that was awkward for me? Um, you can be just a little bit more prepared. The, um, one of the great things is, um, it's really nice to see your progress. Um, because again, it might, because it, it generally it's quite slow. Um, and it, you know, it can, you can almost go for, you know, you go for a period of time where it doesn't really look like you, or you don't feel like you're making any improvements. 
um, and then you can kind of like watch the fat from six months or a year ago and you can suddenly be quite surprised as to how much how much you've improved so I think that is great um, like I said I'm, I'm really finding that now you know I look back on stuff from like I said June July August 2022 and I was playing pretty well then I was very happy with it but if I look at what I'm doing now compared to them there's there's a lot of shots that um, I wasn't really playing then, especially like counters, um, you know, being being aggressive. I think, you know, a year or so ago, I was being quite passive um, when someone was attacking me. Now I'm actually looking to be a little bit more aggressive. So, um, so it's really nice to see that. Um, and I also think that it's quite a good leveler as well um, in terms of, it kind of, it really helps with my confidence. So if, um, if I've gone out and I've played, I mean, again, give you another really good example is um, we played British League in December um, and I, I felt like I had an awful day. Um, I lost all four of my matches that day. Everybody else in the team played really, really well. Um, and I just felt like I let, let everybody down. I didn't feel good on the day. I didn't feel particularly confident. Uh, I couldn't get going. It was just an awful day. Um, and I... Uh, came back and I was I was actually really tempted to just like delete the videos um, which I've never done before but I thought like I just don't even want to watch them back it was that bad um, and then when I watched when I actually watched them back I was like do you know what it wasn't too bad in fact it wasn't anywhere near as bad as what I thought so and um, that's another great thing you know like you, you tend to come away and you're just thinking about all the things that you did poorly um, when in reality there's actually a lot of stuff that um, you did quite well. Now, like I said, admittedly, I, I didn't play my best, but it wasn't anywhere near as bad as what I thought. And then similarly, I've had matches where I thought I played unbelievably well, and then I've watched it back and I've been like, actually, I made quite a few mistakes there. So, um, yeah, so it's a, it's a good, it, it's kind of like, it's a good kind of like leveler, really. It can like, if you think you've done really well, it can bring you down a little bit um, to make you realize you need to keep working. But also when you've not played very well and or you feel like you played dreadful it can kind of bring you up a little bit because it makes you realize that you did actually hit a lot of good shots the the, the final thing that i would say is that um uh, somebody actually wrote this on one of my videos is to bear in mind that uh, progress isn't always linear um so again and I've, I've i've kind of found this a lot recently that you know when i first started playing um you know, and as I kind of mentioned earlier on, I was improving very, very quickly. Um, and it was almost like as each month would go by, I was, I could see how I was getting better and players that I'd, lose, I'd lost to a month before, I was then beating and so on and so forth. And I was getting better and better and better. And I'd say that I found the last 12 months or so, um, the improvements are a lot, they're, they're a lot harder to come by. That's probably the best way to describe it. As you get better, it becomes harder to get better. Um, and again, going back to the British League experience, um, you know, there's, there are times where you almost feel like you're taking a little bit of a step back. Um, but the, the way I always try to look at those kind of situations is that I think, you know, you can always learn something all the time. And if you're not playing very well um, or you, you're underperforming, I think it's quite good to sort of, you know, have a look and say, well, why is that? Um, and I always kind of feel that I'm, you know, that, that there's there's like there's only there's generally a bit of a reason for that. But I always feel like I'm going to come out a little bit stronger on the other side of it. Um, you know, again, so I, n I never get too disheartened about that. You know, if I feel like I've I've underperformed in a match, or I've gone into it and I felt like I should have beat somebody, and then I've actually I've ended up losing. Um, I say initially I might be a bit disappointed. Um, might be questioning why that's happened uh, and again this goes back to you know filming matches you know you actually look back at it and you can sort of say well actually do you know what I played pretty well they just played a little bit better than me um, and I can I can always live with you know somebody playing better than me and beating me um, it's a little bit more difficult at times to you know when I, when I underperform myself but again you know look at well why why was that um, and again, there's generally a reason I might be looking to kind of like, you know, work in some new serves, change my technique ever so slightly. Um, and that can mean that you kind of take a few steps back before, you know, taking the steps forward. So always try and bear that in mind. It's not always um, a linear thing where you just get better and better and better and better. You'll kind of like, you'll, you'll level off for a little bit and then you'll, then you'll improve again and you'll level off. You might even go down a little bit. 
Um, just keep working at it all the time. I'm, I'm a big, big believer that if you can, if you keep working, you keep doing all the right things, you know, you, and um, again, going back to what we said before, you know, if you have good coaching, you have some good practice sessions and some good practice matches, and then you play competitive matches and you do that, that nice mix, then you will improve. Um, and like I say, the better you get, the harder it is to improve. But I still think that all the time you can keep improving. And I hope there's some, uh, some useful tips there. Um, yeah, and let me know if there's any other, anything else that you'd like to know, anything else that you'd like me to do a video on. Um, like I say, I'm still working on different ideas for, um, you know, for like, you know, match analysis videos um, and various different things. So any ideas or anything, just let me know. Okay, cheers guys.